But things started to change for Dr. Liu. He was leading a double life. To the entrenched enemy, he looked like a successful university president. But underground, he was leading a massive intelligence operation against the occupying Japanese. The scholar in the round frame glasses is Herman Liu. When Liu decided to join the missionary school as a young boy, he could not have known the life of purpose and danger that later awaited him. His mission began the moment he heard the message of Jesus and decided to become a Christian in Wuhan, China. Dr. Herman Liu was a gifted student. As a child, he received his education at missionary school in China, planted by the Northern Baptist Convention. Liu wrote that his faith in Jesus Christ began because of a missionary, and thus, he wanted to be one too. It was in school where he developed not only a solid foundation of faith, but a devout love of learning. He made his teachers proud when after graduation, he attended Suzhou University. In 1918, he traveled to the United States where he went on to get his master's and doctorate from Columbia University. In 1922, he returned to China to put his education to work. His first job was the education secretary for the National Young Men's Christian Association, or the YMCA. The excellent work he did as the chief delegate from China to the World YMCA Conference brought him recognition. And in 1928, Liu was offered the prestigious position of president of the Shanghai Baptist College and Theological Seminary. He was the first Chinese president of the university. In 1928, the early winds of the Second World War were already beginning to stir. It was soon mandated for private schools to register with the national government of China and demanded that all religious teachings within the educational system stop. Due to this mandate, the Shanghai Baptist College was renamed the University of Shanghai. Yet despite the name change, Liu continued to champion Christ within the educational system in China. He continued to push for exchange students between the United States and China believing that if Chinese students could experience God and the United States, China would improve much faster. Liu played a key role in the Chinese Baptist Alliance. He served on numerous Christian education and mission boards. He also spearheaded the Forward Movement, which served to reinvigorate the life of the church in China and its missional work. He and his wife Frances established Christian house gatherings in hundreds of homes around Shanghai. He welcomed refugees, he fed the poor, rallied his students to causes of justice, and was an outspoken advocate for freedom of speech and religion. At the time, his colleagues called him a spark plug to help the poor and spread the gospel in China. Because of his position as president of the University of Shanghai, he was an international advocate for peace, attending conferences around the world while at home, organizing and promoting Christian organizations like the YMCA and the Baptist World Alliance. In the words of his peers, it was Dr. Liu's ambition to make the University of Shanghai more Christian and more Chinese, and to that end, extend its usefulness and influence. In 1931, the Japanese invaded Manchuria and Shanghai. Impassioned patriotic students protested at the university, putting the students, their professors, and their university president at the top of Japan's list of enemy combatants. Despite the political and civil war stirring within the country, under Liu's decade of leadership from 1928 to 1938, the University of Shanghai continued to grow and gain worldwide academic recognition. But things started to change for Dr. Liu. He was leading a double life. To the entrenched enemy, he looked like a successful university president. But underground, he was leading a massive intelligence operation against the occupying Japanese. Positioned in the port for European and American trade, the University of Shanghai was in a critical position for information sharing. 
including the spread of documents and photographs of war atrocities and crimes against humanity perpetrated by the Japanese in China. Dr. Liu could not stand still and ignore this injustice. Liu organized and led the Anti-Enemy Committee at the university and was soon appointed as a government liaison to persuade the U.S. to support China against the Japanese invasion. His students began to help smuggle out critical information about the Japanese movements and plans. According to documents within the University of Shanghai, Liu knew the risk he was taking by being an outspoken voice for the university and his students. Liu would not stay silent about the war atrocities being committed by the Japanese. In the dark days leading up to April 1938, Dr. Liu was urged by friends to flee mainland China for the United States. His reply? I will not desert. Dr. Liu said he felt a spiritual call, not only to lead the students in Shanghai, but to fight against persecution and injustice in his nation. On the morning of April 7th, 1938, Liu was on his way to work, taking the bus when he was assassinated at the bus stop. The outcry from the leadership of Shanghai was uniform. A great Christian man had been unjustly taken. A month after his death, a resolution was drafted by the board of the University of Shanghai where Liu taught. It read, Dr. Liu demonstrated the way of Jesus Christ. By his cheerful faith in God and man, by his courage in the presence of constant danger, by his selfless loyalty to his people and nation, by his tenderness to the poor and toward everyone in distress of body and mind. Be it resolved that we pledge ourselves anew to the worldwide cause of Christ to which he devoted his life. From his childhood conversion at the missionary primary school to that bus stop on the fateful day in April 1938, the day of his assassination by Japanese hands, Herman Liu lived a life that shined brightly, spoke boldly, and stood for freedom. A life that inspired others to carry on in the fight. After Herman Liu's death in 1938, the Japanese continued their occupation in China until the end of World War II in 1945. Even to this day, the gospel is prohibited to be preached openly. Only government churches and registered missions are allowed and actively trying to convert others to Christianity can be punishable by imprisonment. While this may seem like a lost cause, the gospel has spread remarkably in the past hundred years. It's widely known that the underground church in China is flourishing, and some even estimate it to be the largest population of Christians in the world. This is due to the efforts of people like Dr. Herman Liu, whose story and sacrifice should be known and celebrated.